Hey, I'm Jelle and I like to make robot arms. It all started with this one, when a couple of years ago I mounted this one to my ceiling and eventually I even taught it how to play video games. Then when I got tired of how difficult this one was to control, I built this smaller version which I can use to control my big arm physically. So now of course I have to build an even smaller one to complete the trifecta. I want my micro arm to be half the size of the smaller one. When you look at it like this, it looks pretty manageable, but this one is still missing the most important parts, the motors. Luckily, the motors don't have to be this big. This is like the biggest one I own. Servos can be much smaller. And smaller, no, even smaller. I found this teeny tiny servo online and it's exactly what I need. As you can guess, the servo is not very strong. And ever since my first arm design, the arm has always been really heavy, especially for the motor at the shoulder joints. That's because the main limiting factors of the servo is the torque it can produce, the amount of force it can apply at a certain distance. When the arm is fully extended, all the weight of the arm gets super far away from the joints. With my big arm, because space was never really an issue, I solved it by buying the biggest servo I could find. But here, the second smallest servo is already about the same size as the whole micro arm. In my other slightly smaller arm, I added a small elastic at the bottom to provide some resistance at the extended position. But as you can see, it's completely disintegrated by now. I need to figure out how to lower the torque that's acting on the servos. And if I can't make my servo stronger or my arm lighter, the only thing I can do is provide some sort of counterforce to keep everything perfectly, perfectly balanced. balanced. This whole thing should be. Wait a minute. Where is it? Where is it? No. 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 Oh yes, I knew it. I knew I remembered it. In this particular scene from the second Iron Man movie, I remember seeing this weird balancey thingy. And apparently, I'm not the only one. That's expensive. Well, never mind. Fine. Why not? I'll do it myself. Okay, sorry, I'll stop with the Thanos references. Anyway, I wanted to make a prototype at a bigger scale to see if it's even a good idea. And because the servos have a lot of internal resistance that could throw off the precise balancing, I wanted to use smooth bearings. And as fate would have it, the servos and the bearings are pretty much the same weight. I present to you Balance Arm V1. Well, it's not really a balance arm yet. Right now, it's just a floppy arm. Time to balance it. Because I bought so many bearings, I'm just going to use them as counterweights as well. Let's start with the shoulder joint. I need to add about five to keep it balanced. If this were to be a servo, it would need zero torque right now. Now let's balance the elbow. All right. Wait, now the shoulder is no longer balanced. Well, a few more bearings and it's back up. Hmm, that's already quite a lot of bearings. And that's not even taking into account all the extra plastic I would need to make it pretty and, and close it all up to hide all the wires. Time for version two. Here it is, Baden's Arm V2. Now in its signature blue and orange color scheme. And also with a bunch more extra bearings. They are really starting to add up. The counterweight side is almost as long as the rest of the arm. But I kinda like the look of it. Oh. Ah, don't worry, little guy. I'll fix you up. You can serve as a perfect prototype for my micro arm. Let's build another arm. What a surprise! It's a new robot arm! Right now, it's the bare bones version. Instead of the flat planes inside cardboard tubes I used in the old one, I now just mount the servos directly in hollow cylinders. That way, the assembly is much easier and I can still fit all the wires through. The counterweight bearing tower was getting way too long to be practical. I would have to put my arm super high above the ground. Luckily, I found something that's a little more suitable to use as counterweights. Actual gimbal counterweights. They are much wider and heavier than bearings, so I need way less of them to keep the arm balanced. And they still match the cylinder aesthetic. The covers also needed some work. The previous ones used a double clamping ring mechanism that was really inconvenient to put together. I always wanted to use the magnetic clamps for my big arm because they are just so satisfying. But the magnets are just too big to fit around the shafts. Plus, they also add some really unwelcome weight. However, now that the shaft is fully 3D printed, I added some little divots where I can clamp the covers on directly. And that's not all. Because I printed the two cover halves super close together, I can use the brim 
used to keep the 3D printed parts from coming loose on the print pad to keep the two separate parts together as a top. That, and maybe a little bit of contact glue. Really lock them in place. At the wrist, I added an interchangeable magnetic mount. So now I can add a useless claw and a googly eyes, or even a crash test dummy safety simulation pin. Woo! All right. Uh, finally, I added a nice base for the arm to rest on to contain all the electronics and prevent it from sliding around. Because this is like my fourth robot arm video, I have the software pretty dialed in. I created a digital robot arm with the same proportions and added a virtual goal. The arm then always points towards the goal using inverse kinematics. I measure all the resulting angles of each joint. Then I can just send all the angles to the real robot arm. And if you want some more details, you can always check my other robot arm videos. So everything should have just worked smoothly. Or at least I thought so. For some reason, the arm was really laggy last time I used it. So there had to be something that was wrong. After some research, I found that it was all due to this single line of code. The Arduino would read the instructions coming from the computer, but instead of directly performing it, it would just wait until a certain time out period, just in case there might be some more data coming. Most of the time, that's completely fine. But in this case, the timeout was like a whole second, meaning all the commands would be super delayed. So after that little detour, I can finally test my robot arm again. All right, let's see if my fix actually fixed anything. All right, oh, look at this. Perfect. And up. there's a slight offset, but nothing too bad. Now let's see if it can actually pull some weight. Whoa, look at this, easy. Whee, whee, whee. Well, that seems to work. Unless, of course, the whole arm tips over. But that's something I'll fix in the future. All right, now that I've finally validated that the balancing concept actually works quite well, it's finally time to build the micro arm. All right, first things first, powering the servo. Hmm. That's a really small connector. I don't think I have the right connector for this one. No, this is one. Mm, and maybe under here. No, no, no. Day two. All right, the mail came in. Mm, this looks promising. Okay, let's see if they fit. <laughs> no, damn it. Oh, now I got to find a new connector. Oh. Day three. New box, new chance. Oh, they're already falling out. These don't even look like they fit. Uh, no, no, they don't. But this one only has two wires. Oh. Day four. Okay, third times is the charm. I mean, it can't be right this time. I triple checked all the measurements. Wires looking good. This might just fit. Oh, yes! Oh, they fit perfectly. Now I can finally test my motors. With the new arm. Okay, they seem to work, but I think they don't have the full 180 degree of range, which is a real bummer. But oh well, I guess I'll just not go as far. I'm already way too deep into these servos. Time to design the full arm. Ta-da! I made another arm. Will it be my last one? Who knows? I don't even know. Let's have a look, shall we? The shafts are made in the same way as the bigger one. Only this time, I have to be extra careful about the margins around the servo, because the connectors are so big, they barely fit. They also have smaller holes for the counterweights, because I found smaller counterweights. Ah, look at them, so cute. I think these were designed for like phone gimbals or something, but they're perfect for my case. The covers were also designed slightly differently. Let's just say the brim connection wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. I still have little holes in the shafts to clamp them on, but this time I added some extra holes at the top of the shafts at the servo side, so now they can clamp on way more securely. And at the counterweight side, I made them slightly longer, so now they come over the edge. And I can use the counterweights to really tighten them in place. And of course, I got a magnetic claw here too. There was one more problem. These thick wires. For a regularly sized robot arm, they're not really a problem. But at this scale, they're so stiff, they were holding the whole arm in place, and the only thing that was supposed to stay in place, the base, was moving with each little command. So I wrapped the wires under the arm in this box. So when the arm turns, the tension in the wires remains relatively the same. And as a nice bonus, the Arduino fits in there as well. You know, now that my old controller arm no longer works, controlling it with my digital version is still doable, but it's not really that fun. So, I made another arm. What can I say? I just can't help myself. This one has potentiometers instead of servo motors, so I can physically measure each angle. And I put this giant weight under it, so it definitely stays in place. Follow the leader, 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 follow the leader, follow him. You know, 
I kinda like making robot arms. Maybe I'll make some more. I still have plenty of ideas. I could make an even smaller version. Or I can use weights. Or even use sticks. Or I can make one out of bananas. I can even make one out of snow. The possibilities are truly endless. Here it is, my arm controller. And what arms can I control? Well, I got so many of them. They weren't all the perfect material to build robot arms, but uh, here are the remainders. The real star of this show, however, here is my micro robot arm and also the mini robot arm, slightly bigger. And finally, the big one, still going strong for about four years now. So let's see them all in action. All right, uh, this is the first time I'm gonna turn them all on. At the same time, um, I'm kind of nervous. I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, step one, step one, uh, power. All right, they're all powered up. Now all I have to do is press play. Oh my God, oh my God. All right, Whew. okay, 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 let's test it. Come on, arms. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Woo! Oh my god. They're all doing it. Yep. Yep. Finally, I have three arms I can control at the same time. Oh. Wait, wait. Oh. <laughs> this is what I've been working on all these months. Oh my god. Oh. I can finally control all the arms. Oh, and they do exactly what I want. Oh, this is perfect. Yes, they finally work. They finally work. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.